In this video, I'm going to give you a super quick, simple rundown to be super secure more than the vast majority of people that use Windows. Now, I believe in simplicity. The more you complicate things, the more shit's going to break, the more problems you're going to have. So we're going to keep this really simple. And again, this will keep you much more secure than the vast majority of people out there. So if you're working with Windows Defender, what we're going to do first, come in here. We're just going to make sure everything's turned on, working great. In this case, you got all green check marks. One of the things you want to check with this is come into app and browser control. Make sure in reputation based protection, everything is turned on, phishing protection on, warning about malicious apps and sites, blah, blah, all that good stuff. One thing to take note of here, smart app control was added in Windows 11, the 22H2 update. Now, I haven't done extensive testing on this yet. It does seem like it would be pretty good at helping prevent malware infections. Like I said, I haven't had a chance to go really in depth on it yet. It seems pretty touchy right now. One thing to keep in mind, if you have this on, if you do decide to turn it off, you can't turn it back on unless you reinstall Windows. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, as far as Windows Defender goes, if you are going to use this, what I would recommend is going a step up. And this is a significant step up. So there's a tool called Configure Defender. There's some other ones out there that are fairly similar. I think they pretty much all accomplish the same thing. I'll just drop a link down in the description if you do want to use Configure Defender. I'll just explain this here real quick. So we'll just go over the basic protection settings here. So by default, this is what Windows Defender has on by default. So if you, I haven't set it to high or max yet, but if you look here, you can see cloud protection level is on by default. Uh, we'll go over that here in just a second. Automatic sample submission is send. You can see that, you know, if you scroll down here further, stuff like scripts and macros are not blocked, which I personally highly recommend blocking them because that's how a lot of malware spreads. Now, if you set protection levels to high, this one works really well and it tends to have the most protection with the least impact of having to deal with stuff like false positives and just having stuff like legitimate software just outright blocked. And if you scroll down here, so for example, cloud protection level is on highest. That means it's going to try to send that to the cloud. Just check and make sure everything's okay. We'll go over the Mac setting here in a second. As you can see, it starts turning on and blocking a lot of the scripts and whatnot. And in this case, controlled folder access is disabled. Now, if we click here on Max, if you're really worried about getting infected or, you know, let's say you're doing a lot of sensitive stuff on your Computer, this is the one I would recommend is the max setting and it will pop up and give you a warning hey this is suited to home administrators if you're not comfortable with tech this probably wouldn't be the best setting but it like I said this one offers great protection if you turn this on Windows Defender does way way better than just the stock setting so it's gonna say that you're gonna get like a lot of false positive security alerts We'll go over that in just a second. Just click continue here. It'll set everything up. Now it's gonna ask, do you wanna hide or keep unhidden the little Microsoft Defender icon that shows up down in the bottom right corner of the screen? I recommend just keeping it unhidden in case you need to go into uh, the security center for any reason. Now, if you do use this, so the cloud protection level has changed to block. So basically what that means is, let's say you lose your internet connection. Now I've got an executable here on desktop. Let's say you go try to run some, ex you've downloaded something and your internet connection cuts out and you want to try to run that software. With this set to block, if you are offline, Defender will absolutely not let you run the executable. For the average home user, I mean, I would recommend just leaving it that way because you're looking to get the most protection here. You don't want your devices getting infected. If you're at the level of a home administrator, maybe you'd be a little more comfortable. It comes down to having some common sense. You don't want to be 
doing something dumb on the internet, going to these weird download sites and download free V-Bucks and download free Minecraft and all this other garbage. I mean, if you're the kind of person doing that, you're probably gonna get an infection on your computer regardless. But as you can see here, it turns on all this other protection. Now, some people are probably asking, well, why the hell doesn't uh, Microsoft block this stuff by default? Well, because it can cause some issues. You know, like the aforementioned example that I gave where it blocks the cloud, uh, where if the cloud setting is set to block, you know, if you're offline, it just won't let you run stuff. Well, for the average home user, they're probably not going to have enough savvy to figure stuff out if Microsoft were to just block all this stuff by default. But again, these are really common threat vectors here that stuff just spreads through. So I would recommend leaving all this stuff on. Now, if you do go with max setting, one thing that I would recommend changing is controlled folder access. This thing just is an absolute pain in the ass to work with. I hate using it. I would recommend setting this to disabled. Basically, for those who aren't familiar with controlled folder access, it's supposed to protect you from ransomware. A lot of ransomware doesn't seem to have any issues bypassing this feature at all. And basically, if you try to run a piece of legitimate software and it needs to make some sort of a temporary folder or a folder to put some sort of cache in, and let's say your user folder, you'll get pop-up from Defender saying, hey, this program's trying to do this. Do you want to allow it? It is just a pain in the ass to work with. So I just prefer to leave it disabled. So... That being said, that basically covers Defender. Now, if you're not going to use Defender, I would recommend some other sort of antivirus. There's a lot of really good suites out there. You can go to a place like AV Comparatives and check out all the different software. There's tons out there. There's stuff like Bitdefender, Kaspersky, Webroot. If you do decide to go with something different, just do your due diligence. Make sure you pick a good software suite. And also just don't go downloading like or, or go Googling free antivirus download because you could end up with, again, malware. There's plenty of malware that disguises itself as antivirus. So you think you're downloading antivirus, but you're actually infecting your entire computer and your bank account details are going to end up getting stolen. So if you use, especially if you're using Configure Defender, I mean, this just sets up security with Defender so well by default. I wouldn't even bother paying for a third party antivirus suite, especially if you're not like a business. I just don't see it being necessary at all. Now, one thing that I will mention, the one issue that I have with Defender, it's been a long time running and Microsoft's getting better at it, but they still have ways to go as the firewall by default and Windows just is absolute pure dog shit. So what I recommend is using a third-party solution for the firewall. Now, one of the things that I've seen a lot of people recommend is the Komodo firewall. It's free. I don't recommend this to people. I've test-driven it a little bit. This thing is a pain in the ass. It gives tons of pop-ups. You know, asking you to buy it, it gives a bunch of pop-ups saying, hey, this thing's trying to connect to the internet. Do you want to allow it? But it does it in a way that's really intrusive and just just from the pop-ups alone that you know when you start the computer up and it's trying to upsell you i just i don't care for it there are two other options these require you to either be somewhat comfortable with computers or require you to take the time to learn how to use them and i'll make detailed videos doing a tutorial on these uh sometime later the first option, this is one I really like, is Simple Wall. Again, I'll leave a link to this stuff down in the uh, description so you can go check it out and download it if you want to. I'll just cover this one and one other tool here really quick that they work really well and I like them quite a bit. Use both of them. <clears throat> now, in Simple Wall, this is your default user interface. You've got apps that you can allow or block. You've got your different tab services, block list, system rules. Again, I'll go over this stuff in a very detailed tutorial video later because I really like the software. And if you run a good firewall, that can help prevent a lot of issues as well. 
But if you are going to use this, again, it, it's going to take some time and to either familiarize yourself with it or you need to have some level of comfortability with computers already because as you can see here, once you turn this on, you're going to have a bunch of stuff like SBC host connecting to the internet or lsass.exe. So you've got all these uh, Windows processes, you're going to have other stuff. So again, it's not necessarily beginner friendly, but if you're willing to put in the effort to learn this stuff, this is a great firewall here. The other option, I really like this one. This is a great piece of software. Is it called Portmaster? Now they have a free version and they have a paid version. The paid version basically, I'll make a video on this software as well, going through it in depth. The paid version uh, has kind of like this Tor feature that it runs your connections through sort of a, a uh, an encrypted way. I, I'll explain it more in, in the video when I make it in depth. You know, you could go with this option as well if you want to. Again, I'd really like this one. You know, so in this case, it's showing you all the stuff that's connected. One thing that I really like about this software in particular is you can do uh, encrypted DNS. It will give you quick settings. So you can either set to Cloudflare with a malware filter. You can do Quad9. You can do AdGuard. You could set up your own stuff and go through it, uh, a separate DNS server. The other thing that I really like about this is it has operating system level uh, ad blockers and tracker blockers. So you know, we'll just go through this here real quick so you can open this up. So ads and trackers is one of the filter lists that's turned on by default. So you know you expand down into ads more. And you've got all these different lists, so it blocks stuff by default. This is a really nice piece of software. I like this quite a bit. So again, I'll do videos on this one as well, how to use it, go over it in great detail at a later date. It's kind of going out of the purview of this video just because we're trying to keep stuff simple here. Next thing you wanna to do to keep Windows safe and secure this is one thing I don't understand why Windows doesn't have this stuff on by default. Whatever, maybe they'll fix it at some point. So you need to open up Windows Explorer. Uh, just any Explorer window, window will do. Click on See More. Go to uh, Options. And we're gonna go to View. A couple things you wanna do here. Show hidden files, folders, and drives and uncheck hide extensions for known file types. We'll go through each of these here real quick. So I'm just gonna go and click apply. So before I click apply here, I've got a executable sitting on the desktop. So I'll just click apply here real quick. Now, you can see the executable now shows as Brave Browser Setup.exe, whereas before, it didn't show exe. The reason you want to do this is a lot of malware spreads because, well, first of all, a lot of people browse through shady websites that they shouldn't be going to. If you're doing sensitive stuff, you're doing banking and stuff like that on your computer, you really shouldn't be going and downloading random weird shit. I don't know why it has to be said, but there's plenty of people that keep getting infected this way. And then they try and blame Microsoft, saying that Microsoft puts out a bad product. Bunch of garbage. But it, when you turn this off here, it shows the extension. So let's say you were to go and download what you think is a picture. So it would, you know, you think that it's a JPEG file. Oh my God. Well, what the what these malware people can do is they can make it so that it looks like it's a JPEG file by putting a <clears throat> extension in here. But if you click or, or uncheck hide extensions for known file types, it will show you the true extension at the end. So in this case, it's a .exe file. Again, super important. You need to make sure you turn that on. That way, if you were to download a file that's trying to disguise itself, uh, as a legitimate file, but it's got a executable file format or something like that, you can see it. The other thing that it does here, so it's 
I checked the option to show hidden files and folders. You don't really need to be concerned about this too much. It's just good to be able to see what hidden files and folders are on your computer. For the most part, you don't want to mess with this stuff at all, but you can see here these grayed out or darker colored folder icons here are what's considered hidden folders. So we'll just go back here real quick, go to view, don't show hidden files and folders. So these disappear. So now when I click show, whole, show hidden files, folders, and drives, a lot of times this is Windows putting sensitive data in there that, you know, if you were to delete it, it could absolutely destroy stuff. So really, you don't want to be going in here messing around. But it's one of those things, again, it's just good to be able to see if there's anything lurking or sneaking around on your computer. Typically, you won't have to worry about that, but it's just good to have that set up. Next thing, make sure you're using a reputable browser. Uh, don't just go download some random browser. I know people like some of these esoteric browsers. I don't want to name names, but if you stick to the common, the reputable stuff, you've got stuff like Google Chrome, the Brave browser, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, just stick to something reputable. Don't go download and use some random piece of garbage internet browser because a lot of them are probably going to have some sort of malware built into them. This goes for Windows. This absolutely applies to uh, Android. A lot of Android apps have an issue with uh, being infected, spying on people, stealing uh, account details, stuff like that. So don't use just random garbage. Next thing, uh, this is something a lot of people overlook. Make sure you are using and running updated chipset drivers. Now, if you're not super tech literate, then you might just have to overlook this one because you don't want to download the wrong thing and break your computer, but your chipset is your motherboard. So you have motherboards by, you know, you'd have AMD and Intel drivers that you would need to download for your computer. So if you have an Intel, uh, 12900K or you know an AMD 5800X you know what chipset driver you're going to use is going to depend but those have a lot of important security fixes there was an issue a while back where uh, AMD chipsets had a pretty severe vulnerability and the way that it was fixed was through an updated uh, chipset driver now some people will say well you can download it from Microsoft uh, up or Windows Update. The issue is that Windows Update may not have the most recent chipset drivers. So I would recommend just going to your chipset manufacturer. Again, that's going to be AMD or Intel, depending on what process you're running in your computer. Again, if you're, if you have just very limited computer knowledge, that might be better to skip because if you were to download the wrong drivers and they were to somehow get installed it could end up breaking a whole bunch of shit uh next thing don't use i've already talked about this a little bit but don't use random garbage software don't go looking on these weird file repository websites that have a million different executables for a thousand different apps on there if you're going to download something you know take the brave browser for example make sure you go to Brave's main website and download from there. I, I don't recommend going to these big file repositories or some shady website in some corner of the internet that's hosting a file because you're taking a significant chance that stuff is going to, uh, you're going you're to end up downloading something that's infected. The other thing I'm going to mention here also, uh, make sure you are using an ad block of some kind. Now, Brave, I love the Brave browser. This is set up great by default out of the box if you're not a tech literate person. Brave browser is absolutely amazing. Uh, if you're using something different like Chrome, Firefox, or Edge as examples, you need to download an ad blocker. Currently, there's only one that I recommend, which is uh, uBlock Origin. 
go to uBlock Origin. There's two uBlocks. There's uBlock and then there's uBlock Origin. Make sure you use Origin. Don't use the other version. These are really important. Number one, it just makes your browsing experience a hell of a lot better. So, you know, let's say you go to YouTube, you like watching YouTube videos, but you get bombarded with ads, you unskippable ads every five minutes, you gotta watch pre-roll ads, all this garbage. This bypasses all of that, it blocks that shit. It makes your browsing experience just a lot better, but ads are being used to deliver a lot of malicious payloads these days. So, you know, you could end up going to a website that's completely legitimate and they could end up having an uh, ads partner on there who's running malicious ads that hijack or attempt to hijack your computer as soon as you open that website. So it's super important to make sure to block that stuff. There's other stuff. There was a, an issue here not too long ago where Microsoft or, or rather Google was having AdWords campaigns ran where legitimate software like OBS Studio, for example, these malware company or malware distributors were running Google ads where people would click on the ad thinking that that was where they went to download the legitimate software, but instead they were downloading a virus. So I would recommend blocking all ads. They're just pure garbage and they just run the experience of using a computer in general. Now, that is going to wrap this up. I'm going to put out an advanced guide at a later date. There's a lot more stuff you can do. There's a very in-depth way that you can go about setting up your Windows system. It's better that you have some familiarity with computers in general before you do that. It certainly isn't something I would recommend to beginners, but I'll making, be making a very in-depth guide on that at a later date. Again, I'm also going to be making stuff covering how to set these firewalls up if that's what you want to use. <clears throat> and with all that being said, that's going to wrap this video up. If you like it, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, comment, subscribe, or dislike it. I don't care. And I'll see you in the next one.